Welcome to yet another edition of Your Health. I'm Marie Yambo. Today, we focus on drug addiction, but not the kind of drugs that you may think of. Most people associate drug addiction with narcotic drugs such as bang and heroin, but did you know that over-the-counter drugs such as painkillers, if misused, can lead to addiction? Well, that is the story of Sharon Haemba, living life on the first lane and climbing the corporate ladder, a visit to the pharmacist is all it took to turn her life upside down. She's here to share her story of addiction, depression, and triumph. And once an addict, Martin Mawera is now an addiction counselor, psychologist, and will be giving us a perspective of over-the-counter drug addiction in the country. Welcome to you, Sharon and Martin. Yeah, thank, thank you. Sharon, let's start with you. Yeah. Your story is one that, you know, um, I, I listened to when we, you know, before you came into the studio, and it's trauma, but at the same time, there's a lot uh, that is to be admired uh, with the way that you're able to come out of it. But let's start with how it all started. Yeah. You're working, yes. you know, you're, you're, everything is going on well with you. Yes. And then, yeah. Uh, I, was, uh, I was working uh, in a very good uh, uh, position in my workplace and a very good company in Kenya. And um, I was doing well, money was coming in. So at one point, I had to travel out of the country for, for work. And when I came back, I had not slept for quite a while and I was very tired. And um, I remember a friend of mine once said that you can get uh, medication to just help you sleep and relax a bit. And I really thought that's a really good idea because I was very tired and I really needed to rest. So I decided to go and get something to help me rest. So uh, I went to a chemist close to where I was staying and I asked the lady to get me something that I can give me a medication that can help me relax mm -hmm. and sleep because I was very tired and possibly a painkiller because I also, I also had some headache, migraine, because of so much, uh, the traveling, the jet lag and all that. So uh, this lady gave me a particular drug and told me you can take one and it will really help you rest. And yes, so I took one drug mm -hmm. and oh my God, it was, it, was, it was really good at that time. It made me feel so good. I slept so well, um, and the following day, I was like, hey, that drug, I, would wounded, I wouldn't mind to have another one. So the next day, I took it again. And after I took it again, because it, it made me relax. After a long day from work, I would come traffic, and I just want to relax and have a quiet evening, I would take the drug. It actually does it for you if if you know what i mean when okay. you've had a long day you mm -hmm. just want to chill out and and the drug actually does it for you so for me after that day it became now a habit i took it for like a month after that mm -hmm. and then one month turned to two two months so turned because to this this drug was only supposed to help you for this particular day that you're feeling uh, quite exhausted and yes, all that. Yes. But are you saying that you continue taking the drugs yes. and maybe taking even more? Yes. How much more were you taking at the end of it? Oh, wow. Uh, I started with just one tablet a day. Uh, but as time goes by, it's not enough. Like you, it, it doesn't really get you there where you need to get because it gives you a certain high uh, when, once you take it, it calms you down, and then it gives you something called euphoria. You you feel like it's it's a very nice feeling, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you just want to chill, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, once you take one, the after like a week, you can't take one. You have to take two to for you to get to where uh, you you are the first time you took the one. So at the end of it all, I remember. Uh, three years down the line, because I took it for three years, I was taking like 10 tablets a day Wow! to get to where I got the first time. Okay. And now you're taking 10 tablets a day. Yes. 
you're not thinking like something is wrong here because I only needed uh, to take this tablet for one day. Yeah. Uh, fine, I did get um, relief from it. Now it's like 10 drugs a day. Did it ever click that something is not correct? And, you know. Mary, it did. It did. But then, what, wha once, uh, once I took it and I was at two tablets and three and four, uh, I became so attached to it that I could ac not actually function without it. I could not live, I could not wake up, I could not sleep, I could not do anything without it. And the sadness, uh, the sad thing about this whole thing is you can't take two like you took a month ago. The ha you need to, to like double the dose to get to where you are like a month ago. So the more you, the more you take uh, the more you take, the more you become used to it. So you need a higher dose to get a bit higher. Get, yeah. Yes. And to relax you the way, and to relax you the way the you wanted. Time. So mm -hmm. three years down the line, I was taking like 10 tablets. Mm -hmm. I knew something was wrong. Okay. I knew something needs to be done. But then I did not know even how, how, do, I start. how do I start. And I was so in too deep for me. For me, it was, I, w I didn't see any other way. Martin, let me bring you in here. Yeah. Uh, Sharon has talked about, I mean, it's just a drug that she was given over the counter. Mm. Being um, an addiction specialist and uh, one that also, you know, is a psychologist, how rampant is this problem in the country where I can just walk into a pharmacy innocently and I'm given something and medicine and there I am? Yeah. Uh, in like in Kenya today, because we have so many uh, chemists with uh, which, which are not licensed, also there are quacks in the industry. You can you can assess the those over the counter drugs very easily. You can you can maybe have a prescription even from a, a dog. You pay something and then you go to a over the counter. You buy the medicine and uh, the usage will increase as days goes by. Mm. So you'll find that like like the the, the, medi the medicine maybe that she used, it was for, for coming down. But now it, it creates an euphoric an euphoria mood to her. Mm. So she has to use it day on daily prep on daily. Okay. Yeah, because uh, like other addictions, it becomes obsessive and then col the compulsive use because if they go, the, the medicine goes and hurts the, 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 the overproduction of other the brain chemicals. Okay. So the brain will always ask for that drug. So it has already it created a craving to you mm. of which you must feed that craving. Okay. That's how addiction works. You know, and maybe I, I know of people who take painkillers. I don't know whether it's, I, I can't understand because sometimes somebody is just like, they're always taking painkillers. Uh, apart from the tramadol that she's talking about, mm. are, are there ways that people can know that uh, they're addicted to a certain drug? Because sometimes it might not really have a headache, but it might not give you the euphoria that maybe tramadol gives, mm. but it can someone know that I'm now no longer treating a headache. This is now an addiction of yeah. some sort. Obvious, when, when, when after taking the drug for so long, and uh, you feel like you have no headache and then you are, you are going for that medication, Already you have created a dependency in your body. So the body, you are treating the craving now, not the any pain. Mm -hmm. When the craving comes in your body, you have to treat it. So you just find yourself going for that medication. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Sharon, the symptoms that now you are going through, yeah. because one, you notice that you're depending on this drug too much. Mm -hmm. You could not function, at least you could not relax without it. But what are other signs, or what are some of the, uh, of the symptoms that y you went through? Mm -hmm. You know, what are some of the, you know, incidences, if I may call them, that uh, you went through using uh, the drugs? Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, when I started taking the drug, um, really, I, I really didn't need it. Even um, after relaxing and all, it's not like I had any pain. I, I started taking just for the, for the good feeling, for the relaxing. And then after a very short period of time, once I would skip not taking, my everything will practically stop. 
my brain stops functioning, I become very irritable, I would cause a lot of chaos, I would start, I would even want to scream, when I'm alone I would start screaming, I became so agitated, you would not even step on me, I would slap you, because it, without it, I was just not me again. Mm -hmm. I was so, uh, if, if I could sleep at night without taking the tramadol, the nightmares, the sweating, the panting, the, the shaking, I would, oh my goodness, if I remember those nights, even right now, I just get, <laughs> I feel a little bit, mm -hmm. yeah. It also affected your work. Yes, it did. It did. Yeah. After a while, I could no longer wake up early to go to work. Because if you're taking like five or ten tablets a day, <laughs> that's a lot of drugs. And I would sleep, I will take at night and sleep to midday, the following day. So which office do you go at midday? <laughs> yeah? yeah? So exactly. after a short period of time, they were like, hey, madam, you, this work, you can't do it anymore. And then... Uh, you can imagine if I skip a dose and I'm going to see a client, I'll become... I remember one time I even walked out of a meeting because I was just so agitated. This person just seemed weird and I just couldn't take it and I just walked out of a meeting. Mm -hmm. And that practically cost me my job because it was a big client. Mm -hmm. So after some time, I could no longer function well. After some time, I could... I had to sleep a lot. I slept a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I would sleep for 24 hours straight. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I would sleep even for three days without waking up, mm -hmm. without eating. So with time, I lost so many things. I lost my job. I started avoiding people. I went into my own cocoon. And now because I didn't have a job, and now things started, uh, started going, uh, everything started just not mm -hmm. working out. Yeah. I had to sell some of the things I had to be able to maintain my life. Yeah, I remember you talked about selling your car. Yes, I sold my car mm -hmm. at a throwaway price. Which is? Oh my God, <laughs> I can't even say it. <laughs> it's, it's embarrassing. <laughs> I had to sell because now I got to a point I couldn't even afford now buying the drug over the counter because now if I'm not working, uh, and there's no way. how much is the drug, by the way? Funny enough, it's only 100 shillings, 10 tablets. But then if I'm taking 10 a day, it means I'm spending 100 bob a day. So you had to sell your car? I had to sell my car. Anything else of importance that oh my goodness. it drove you to do? Oh my God. I, le uh, I was living in a very nice apartment. I had to really go down and move to a single house that I could actually now afford with my drug thing. If you, if you, I know people who have gone through addiction can tell you you, you don't even see the value of these things anymore. Mm. You get to a point, you just, what, I sell, what, what do you, what, I'll sell even my phone. Yeah, that, you sell whatever, yeah. even the TV in the house, mm -hmm. you'll go sell, yeah. because you just need that drug, because that drug just is like a comforter. Okay. It puts you at a place that you feel like you don't need anything else, mm -hmm. or anybody anyway. Mm. Yes. Martin, I'm sure you can, you can relate. I, I mean, relate. Addiction, I relate is, very uh, well. addiction is addiction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, in, in your work, since now you've, you're recovered and you've now decided that this is the work that you want to do. Mm. So what are some of the steps you take the addicts through to be able to recover? What are some of the um, things? Mm. Uh, like, for example, my friend... Uh, before she got she got addicted, it was step by step. So even even when you want to stop, it will become a, a it's a, like a program step by step. So we move from this from maybe from detoxification, so that you can remove those chemicals in your body. At least you sober up, mm -hmm. then you can be able to make better decisions. Mm -hmm. Then there is uh, for treating like those people with, who are abusing prescription, we do the 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 behavior, mm -hmm. the behavior change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because. It, there are some, we, are, we also have some medication to counter, but they are also addictive. Like she can use methadone, of, of which oh is yeah. also addictive, mm -hmm. more addictive even than the, the one we are using. Mm -hmm. But uh, so unless we do the behavior change for her to get back to her state, to her sanity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you can, you change your lifestyle from, from even going to those, to the, to the friends who are using, 
Also, you can change the places. You can change even going to those chemists. Mm. Then you keep yourself busy again. Mm. You start doing whatever you are doing before. Then when, when maybe you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you need some rest, you look for healthy ways to cope. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and, and Sharon, I mean, uh, you kicked out the addiction. Oh, yes, you I know. did. I don't know how many years has it been. Yeah. And um, do you always have the fear of relapse or something like that? Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, it's been 2017. It's been almost four years since I kicked it. And, oh, wow, it was a journey for me. For me, it was not just addiction I was dealing with. Uh, once I, I decided to do a bit of counseling. Uh, I, actually, I went into serious counseling, psychological help, like, like for real. Mm -hmm. I had to stop everything and get psychological help from, from what, why I took the drug. Yeah. I started healing from that point. Mm -hmm. So uh, then I realized I, was, I, I, was, I had gotten into depression deep into depression because at some point I would get very suicidal even when I was taking the 10 or 15 drugs sometimes the the need to take was to end this thing because I was feeling like everything There's is not working out pain. yes it's too much pain, it's too much pain. Mm -hmm. so um, I, I managed to kick to to get out of this situation by a lot of help professional help mm -hmm. uh, the reason why I'm even, I've come out is because most of the people who are going through what I'm going through cannot come out and tell you what exactly is happening. Because for me, I, had, I hid this thing from my family until the time I recovered is when they knew I had a problem. So the people I went to for help are not even people that are close to me. I went somewhere that nobody knows me completely to help me because how do you now go back to where everyone is looking at you as a breadwinner, mm. as a mm. firstborn, who you are helping your siblings, and then you're telling them that now uh, I am going through this. Yeah. Nobody understands. And I felt mm. being in Kenya, how do you become the first person to ever talk about this kind of addiction? Because I've never had it anywhere. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Nobody, the, nobody talks we, about I mean, it. We talk about other uh, uh, drug addictions, yes. but never, never over the counter yes. or at least, you know, painkillers mm -hmm. for that matter, addiction. Mm -hmm. And now um, you're doing some work. You have an organization, oh, yes, Be Beyond do. Heart. Yes. You also have this uh, book, yes. uh, Beyond Heart. Yes. Uh, where can people get it? Uh, Beyond Heart, you can order online. We are live on Amazon. You can get it on Amazon. And also you can just uh, order on my uh, Facebook site, Beyond Heart. We have a Facebook site on Beyond Heart and it's delivered to you. And in town, you can get it at the CBD. Uh, there is a book stand at uh, Tomboya next to Smoothers. Just right there, you'll get the book. What do you want people to take out of this book? Because this is your life journey. Oh yes. What would you like, what is that one thing that if anybody misses, should get out of this book? Wow. Uh, the most important thing is, and that's my cry all the time. Uh, one, we need people to do something about this particular addiction. I'll tell you something, Marie. I went to a rehab and I was sent out because they could not take me. They mm -hmm. don't know what you, what are you suffering from? As in, what, this, what is opioid? We don't know this kind of addiction. For, so when I was recovering, I went through uh, so much that I realized that people need one to know that you need to take care of what you take. When you go to the hospital, please ask questions. Don't just take drugs. Because I've, I've heard of people who actually are given by the doctor and they still go through the same thing. So please ask questions about the drugs you're given. Please avoid over-counter medication. If as, for, as in, if you don't have to, to take it, please don't take it mm -hmm. at all. Okay. Ask how long you need to take your drugs. Don't just take drugs continuously without knowing what you're getting yourself into. Mm -hmm. And another thing, we need to make so much noise. People need to know that this thing is out here. People are going through the same thing. My editor, the lady who edited my book, is going through the same thing. She took uh, some drug and right now she's like, I, I take it every day. 
So when she read my book, she realized, oh my God, I'm getting myself into so much trouble. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for me, the reason why this book is out here, one, is for people to know that actually this is in Kenya. People are going through this. Number two, where do we get help? People who have gone through this, exactly. where do we get and, this and help? And Martin, that's the thing. Yeah. How important is it for someone to seek professional help? Because, I mean, generally we are very averse to seeking help when it comes to such personal things as counseling or yes. a, a addiction for that matter. Mm -hmm. How important is uh, professional help when it comes to? You see, like for us, uh, there is someone that she has stated that she got, uh, she, after she accepted that she had a problem, that's when she was able to heal from beginning from why did I take this drug? Mm. So that's, I, I think that's the reason why a person should seek the professional help. So that the, maybe the therapist can help you the, to, to see, to go down deep down to the underlying issues that maybe triggered her to, to take that drug or mm. to, for you to take that drug. Mm. And also there are, you, you see in every addiction there are, there, are, there are some underlying issues that a person is trying to escape yeah. from. You may be going through a trauma and then you have nowhere to, no one to help you. Mm -hmm. So if you find a, me a medication that can calm you down, then you get used to it and from, from the first day you, 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 are, you are start using that medication, mm -hmm. you find that it becomes part of you. Yeah. So it, 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 it masks that trauma, mm -hmm. then you feel highly, you, you are laughing with other people and you don't know inside you that that trauma you haven't dealt it with it or it, you, you haven't dealt with that trauma. Mm. Okay. So step by step you find yourself that the trauma you are, you are masking the trauma. It is the, the drug goes and escalates the problem. Mm. So That's why like after some few me, few few months you find yourself getting into depression mm. because now that medication did not help you. Okay. It escalated things. Mm. Yeah. Sharon, I don't know what your parting uh, words would be yeah. uh, to those listening, you mm -hmm. know, um, opioid or over the drug, uh, over the counter uh, drug addiction is not something that is very well known, yeah. but what would you, what word would you want to put out there, especially when it comes to support? Mm -hmm. Because people look at you, you're at work, you were doing very well, all of a sudden you're not performing and mm -hmm. people start judging you and the stigma that comes with it. Mm -hmm. What is that message that you'd want to put out there? Uh, what I would say is, please, let's, let's, be, uh, let's be more, con actually, let's, um, let when you're looking, sensitive? Yeah. yeah, let's be more sensitive to uh, the people around us because for me, uh, it is so sad that people, my I didn't have a support system. I had to do it on my own. Uh, but maybe if there was a support system, if you would be surrounded by people who actually care, you would feel like you can share this with them. And through that, it's even easier to get out of some of these things. Because for me, it took over three years to get better. Mm -hmm. Maybe if I had a support system, it could take less of a time. Mm. So what I would say is, um, those people who are going through the same thing, please, please, I know we hide, especially opioid. Mm -hmm. we, it's very, it, it makes you hide in a cocoon. It, mm -hmm. it pushes you to hide. Okay. Please, you can get help. Mm -hmm. If I did and got better, anybody else can. can. Yes. Martin, yeah. you see, you see uh, why, why an addict, they, they tend to hide so much. Now, the problem with prescription drugs people are in denial because it's over the counter. Yeah. So it's a company. You, you didn't company. go looking for it. You no, just a company, went a company sat down mm. and then gave that this medication. Yes. So it's okay. Even yeah. the doctors are prescribing it. Yes. Mm. So that person will live in denial even if he or she is in problem. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Well, thank you very much, Sharon. Thank you very much, Martin, for uh, your words of wisdom. And also enlightening us, you know, in as far as uh, opioid <laughs> addiction is concerned, which is not very well known, you know, over-the-counter drugs. Um, uh, thank you for, uh, I mean, highlighting uh, some of the, of the symptoms that we can look out for, uh, you know, to ensure that we are aware, yeah. you know, um, in case somebody is getting into some form of addiction. Because when you walk into a chemist, you have a headache. 
or you're, you're feeling uh, tired and you just want to sleep, people take even uh, sleep medication just to mm -hmm. help them sleep overnight yeah. and hopefully the next day they'll be able to function. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, they find themselves addicted and they have no clue what happened to them. Yeah. So with that, we come to the end of the program uh, today. I hope that you've learned so much in as far as the over-the-counter drug addiction is concerned, some of the symptoms that you should be aware of, and be sure to ask your doctor, as Sharon has said, how long should you be taking your medicine? What are some of the side effects of your medicine? You know, that way you'll be aware if you see something that is off. So until next time, I do wish you well. Have a good night. <laughs>